The conceptual idea behind the JPDA update can be explained as follows. We start with an independent prior density and the marginal posterior for object I can be described using the marginal association probabilities. So we have beta I zero times the prior density because without a detection, there's nothing to update the prediction with. And then we add a sum over all measurements where we have beta I J times the posterior density that results from updating the prior for object I with measurement J. So you should note that these marginal posteriors are multimodal. In other words, they are mixture densities. Next, for each object, we merge the marginal posterior using some merging function that merges the densities into a single density. So a typical choice here is to use moment matching that minimizes the kullback leibler divergence. For Gaussian densities, this corresponds to matching the mean and matching the covariance. And lastly, the posterior density for the n objects is the product of the merged marginal posteriors. And the basics of the JPDA recursion is that for each time step, again, we start with a Chapman Kolmogorov prediction for each object. If we have Gaussian object densities and linear Gaussian transition density, then this comes down to the Kalman filter prediction. Next, in the update, we start by computing the marginal association probabilities. And given the association probabilities for each object, we compute the merged marginal posterior. We will show later what the merged mean and covariances are if we have Gaussian object densities and linear Gaussian measurement model. Just like in GNN, we may wish to compute object estimates. And for JPDA filters, the expected value is a common choice for the estimator. So again, for Gaussian densities, this is a convenient choice because the expected value is one of the two parameters of the Gaussian density. We can show what the predicted and updated merged Gaussian parameters are for linear Gaussian models. So we let PD be constant, the clutter intensity is uniform, and the measurement likelihood and transition density are linear and Gaussian. If the initial prior is Gaussian, then the posterior density will be parameterized by the mean and the covariance for each object. For the prediction, the Kalman prediction is used. And because we have seen this many times already, we will not show it again. Instead, we will focus on the merged mean and covariance that we have in the update. So given the predicted parameters, the updated mean for object I is computed by first computing an innovation for each measurement J, denoted epsilon IJ. Next, an expected innovation called epsilon is computed as the sum of beta IJ times epsilon IJ. And the updated merged mean is given by the Kalman update with the expected innovation. You should note that if the marginal probability of no association, beta I zero, is very large or almost equal to one, then the marginal probabilities for the measurement will be almost zero because they all have to sum to one. And then the expected innovation will be a vector where all elements are almost zero. And it then follows that the merged mean is equal more or less to the predicted mean. And this is what we expect if the probability of no association is very high. The updated merged covariance is the sum of three parts. So first we have beta i zero times the prior covariance. So the probability of no association and the covariance that we have if there's no measurement that we can update with. Second is one minus beta i zero times p bar. This is the probability of associating to any of the detections and the covariance that results from updating with a measurement. And the third part is P tilde. If the gated measurements are quite similar, are close together, their corresponding innovations will also be similar and their spread will therefore be small, leading to a small P tilde. Similarly, if the gated measurements are different, their innovations will be different and this will lead to a large spread and a large P tilde. So it can be shown that this update for the mean and the covariance matches the mean and the covariance of the marginal posterior mixture density. But the mathematics of this are quite tedious, so we will not show this in this video. We can illustrate the JPDA merging using an example. So here we have the six objects and 15 measurements again. So this time we're going to focus on object six and the two measurements that fall inside its gate. For this object, the prior density is now shown in blue and we have two detections shown as red squares. 
We have marginal association probabilities for misdetection equal to 0 0.09, association to measurement 1 equal to 0 0.77, and association to measurement 15 equal to 0 0.14. Here we show the Gaussians that would result from misdetection, association to measurement 1, and association to measurement 15. And the width of the line that shows the covariance matrix is proportional to the marginal association probability. So we have the largest width for the association to measurement 1, since that probability was highest, 0 0.77. And lastly, we have the merged mean and covariance, shown by an orange triangle and an orange ellipse. The merged mean is closest to the mean resulting from measurement 1, because that association probability was highest, 0 0.77. The merged covariance is larger than the covariance for association to measurement 1 due to the fact that with probability 0 0.23, the correct association was either measurement 15 or a misdetection. We noted earlier that computing the marginal association probabilities involved the sum over all valid associations. And as we know, this can have very high computational cost or even be intractable. In object tracking literature, some methods can be found for approximating the marginal association probabilities. For example, there are the methods called cheap JPDA, suboptimal JPDA, and fast JPDA. It goes beyond the scope of this course to explain these different methods, but if you're interested, you can look into them. Another way to approximate the marginal association probabilities is to use a method to find the MBEST associations, and then use only those associations. So using this method, the larger we choose m, the more accurate the approximation of beta ij will be.